everyone. We are heading to Ellie Beach today. kind of like the main town in the Whitsundays where all the kind of major marinas are, all the shops and restaurants and pubs and things like that. All the day trips and excursions leave, almost all of them leave from Ellie Beach. So we haven't really had a chance to do much exploring there yet. So we thought that while uh, the weather was a little bit iffy, it's a bit iffy at the moment, we've got sunshine in that direction and like black cloud behind me. We go to Ellie Beach and just check it out. I'm pretty excited. Just in the midst of dropping the mooring line, the strop, and then we'll get the sails up and get going. Good morning. It looks like we've got 30 to 35 knots of wind today, again. Um, it's a good downwind sail. So I think we'll fly under jib downwind. Um, should be a fast passage because we have uh, the winds behind us and the tide behind us. And the other thing we're trying to do is just get between bands of rain. So we've just had one squall pass through. Um, so there's another one probably about half an hour off. So I think what we'll do is we'll get out, um, get the boat, get the boat settled, and then get the jib out and just blast downwind. All right, let's get going. Remind everyone why we don't know what the wind speed is. Our anemometer doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, really well, look, look at the hawk. Oh, I, I know what direction it's coming from, but it's. Well, that's 15 odd knots, I think. Fif yeah. 15, 17 knots? Yeah. The luff needs to be adjusted on that. Okay, Yeah, that's better. That's better. We're not used to having a traveler on the sheet, are we? So we are just under jib and we're doing six knots. But I do believe we've got, well, we must have a tide with us. You can tell what the tide is. The tide oh, is where? Can you show me? It's on that instrument down there on the left hand side. Our boot speed is four and a half knots. We've got one and a half knot of tide. That's great. So we're still doing four and a half knots of um, boat speed. I had no problem with that through the water yeah that's good isn't it yeah i don't, don't like that shooting angle i know but there's not much we can do about it well actually there is not right now no not now yeah but there is i see that um oh, i said southerly <laughs> sea winds have um there are tracks here and that yes. looks like a proper you know if we stuck a line on that oh sorry how very dare me if we stuck a sheet on that <laughs> we could actually change that sheeting angle enough to get a much better kind of like sail shape well i think there is a genoa on this boat but we don't have that up yeah but we don't have the, the genoa no they left they didn't put the genoa on yeah i know that's what i'm saying so that's probably why the tracks are there oh yeah yeah but you could you can just use a barber hauler yeah you could use a barber hauler on that jib yeah there's too much curl back in it to stop i mean look i could i could play around with the leech lines but there's 
it's just it's too curved in on itself like if i let this out now that's where i kind of want to be but look at the yeah, but it's us. let me go and play with the electrons can you just go and check the nav just quickly yeah, yeah. there's a there's a shot Charlie comes in, but he doesn't want you playing with your leech lines. We've tried all sorts of Jumanji knots in that. All right, well, there you go. Oversheated. Or uh, you're losing the upper clue. A barber hauler for the clue. Yeah. Down here, you'd actually get the sheeting angle, which would actually, if you had this pretty far forward, so that you didn't get it abrading on there, you'd actually get a really nice, you get a really nice sail shape. Yeah. There you go, there's a compromise. Don't forget, drive comes from the bottom two thirds. Wow, a nice calm sail. That's a first here in the Whit Sundays. Not had that yet. It's lovely. Really, really beautiful. It's crazy the weather here. Like, one minute it is like torrential downpours and crazy gusts of wind. And then the next is just like a gentle breeze and bright sunshine. It's, um, I guess, kind of that typical subtropical weather, but yeah, it's kind of crazy. Oh, this is perfection, isn't it? Uh, we've got three knots of tide, six and a half, so three and a half knots, just under jib alone, and we're, I think, that wind is, that wind here is less than 15 knots. Yeah, definitely. So I think what you've got here is literally this little wind hole. Um, it's interesting actually, I was looking at um, some of the footage that we took yesterday, the drone footage, uh -huh. and when you look at it, you can actually see the wind gusts so on the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you literally, I flew it from the beach and you can literally see these huge gusts, but it's interesting that if you look at those gusts, the gusts come, and gusts normally do this, come from a different direction to the, to the, to the prevailing wind. So you'll get, that, that's why when you, your boat will always kind of like violent, you know, veer violently in, in strong gusts, um, because it comes from a different direction. Anyway. Anyway. Well, this is very pleasant indeed. literally just deliberately crash landed the drone into the boat. I can't believe he did that. I was all ready to like try and catch it again. Yeah, we were running very low on drone power. Um, I don't think we, we do this all the time. How many times do I say you never realize the, the true wind when you're sailing downwind? It's like, oh, this is a nice breezy sail. And all of a sudden you find out you've got like 20 knots of true Anyway, so we went, well, the drone was running out of power. We tried to manually catch it the normal, the normal way we do it. Three or four times, I judged it. I deemed it to be a risk to your fingers. Um, well, we almost crashed it launching it. I think that was uh, using our remote. Okay, well, we almost crashed it launching it and we almost crashed it um, retrieving it the first time. I made a decision just to fly it, just to, to yeet it inside, uh, inside the, cat, the cockpit. I might, I might just add that um, I was like just getting myself organized for another, I was literally just in the midst of dumping the jib and we were slowing the boat down to try and catch it again. Like I was right there ready to catch it. I saw an opportunity. And then suddenly like it was, yeah, being flown through that gap right there, just into the saloon. And uh, it's actually intact, believe it or not. I worded out from crashing it so many times. Uh, this is from the tree that I hit. Yeah, we've got some kind of War wounds. Use it or lose it. God. Okay, we're in. You good? Yeah. Just coming into uh, the mooring field now. It's very, very beautiful around here, you know. Very, very beautiful. So the plan is that we are going to pick up a mooring ball. We've called up the uh, charter company. They have a ball that um, is available for, for the use of the charterers. I hope you can hear me over this wind. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna stay here for a few days, I reckon. Just explore Ellie Beach. I'm pretty excited. 
It's fairly windy in here, but it should be fairly well protected from the southeasterly uh, winds. They are the prevailing winds at this time of year, so I think it's pretty well protected. At the moment, it's really lovely and sunny. Hi, Evenings on board in a beautiful bay full of anchored boats is such a special time of day. We love watching the sunset while sitting in the cockpit, having a chat and enjoying a beer. Nick usually brings out his guitar while I just enjoy watching the sun slowly sink below the horizon. It's a time of reflection, a chance to be fully present but also to start contemplating the next day and what our plans might be. We had hoped to explore Ellie Beach, but before we could jump in the dinghy, we came across a rather urgent problem. Guy from the uh, marina, I think he's an engineer of some kind, on the boat. Uh, yeah, we've got to go into the marina, unfortunately. Problem with a blocked holding tank, and for the record, it was not our doing. <laughs> Just want to make that very clear, living on a boat for six years uh, we are pretty well trained when it comes to managing um, the toileting situation on board got to go into the marina to get try and get the um, the tank actually pumped out Nick and the guy are just um, sorting out our lines and fenders at the moment I will head in now and um, yeah see if we can't get this holding tank emptied and unblocked all right I'll um, be back soon So the holding tank is uh, unblocked, which is lovely. Nick, do you want to explain that whole thing, that whole situation? We had to duck back into the marina. Our holding tank wouldn't empty, and um, despite everyone going, "Ooh, that's a horrible thing," you know, have you? How did you manage to gunge that up? It's scale. Uh, the pipes scale up with time, and um, yeah, it's got to be manually pumped out, and then uh, the the, uh, the tank has to be treated with acid to. Um, kind of dissolve all the scale there's it's what happens is when you get seawater seawater mixes with urine and creates uric acid crystals so over time the bore of the pipes just decreases and decreases and eventually a bit of scale will kind of break off a bit like having a heart attack only in holding tank form so yeah we've had to just duck back in they literally fixed it in 10 minutes thank you to the the, the company they're like well just stay here tonight we're not going to charge you so um you know we've got some chores to do this afternoon we get the boat tidied up again and then we'll head off in the morning so that's a holding tank fixed. But that's a freshwater... Um, salt water flush. It's a salt water flush. Oh, I see. I tasted it. Ew. Well, only from the toilet inlet. <laughs> <laughs> to be in the holding tank. <laughs> I think we had cardamom last night. <laughs> After so much time spent amongst the mostly uninhabited Whitsunday Islands, coming into action-packed Ellie Beach was a welcome change of pace. As the weather started to clear up and the sun came out, we spent several days here enjoying the relaxed holiday vibe. The beaches are gorgeous and the people are so friendly. We loved Ellie Beach and we felt that we could have spent a lot more time here. However, after a few days of daily walks to the market and nightly beers at the marina bar, the islands beckoned once more. Join us next week for an exhilarating sail to Sid Harbour. I'll tell you what, this boat is absolutely flying along. It feels really, really good. I'm happy. Skipper's happy. And a tough but rewarding hike to the top of Whitsunday Peak. Oh, wow. <sighs> Jesus. Are you still alive? Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment with your thoughts. And we'll see you next week.